Hello, hi, welcome back. We're gonna do a declutter today. The first of my eyeshadow declutters that I've done in like about two years. It's definitely necessary at this point because I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I bought when I was going through a bit of a ColourPop craze and I was like, I'm gonna wear all of these palettes. And I like ColourPop, but I think it's time to let a bunch of them go. I was definitely in a bit of a collector's mindset when I started to buy ColourPop. And since then, I've branched out and realized that there are other brands that I like a lot more. So I'm probably gonna keep some of the ColourPop stuff, but a lot of it needs to be uh, put out to pasture. Most of what I'm gonna get rid of is gonna go on Poshmark. If there's anything that any of my friends really want, I'll probably give it to them. But otherwise, yeah, it's just gonna all end up on Poshmark for anyone who wants it to go and take a look at. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything that I have on my face is gonna be listed down in the description box below. I went a little bit overboard with the eyeshadow today, but I kind of really love it. I did not intend to make it so colorful and editorial, but this is just kind of how it turned out and I'm not mad at it. So details about that will be listed in the description box if you're interested. But otherwise, let us continue to the declutter. Hello everybody, welcome to this vicious, vicious declutter. Um, I'm gonna try and get rid of as much as I can today. Um, I think I'll start with not ColourPop because I know of those ones which I wanna get rid of. For ColourPop, it's more of like, what can I reasonably get rid of that I already have in my other collection? So let's just get started. First up, I have these Melt palettes. I believe these are all of the Melt palettes that I actually own. So I have She's in Parties, Muerte and Vida. I'll put those on the other side because they're they're just so pretty, look at them. Yeah, so these are all the Melt palettes that I own. Needless to say, these are not going anywhere. I absolutely adore all, all three of them. There's Muerte. Like, look at that freaking beautiful color story. Vida, also beautiful, also stunning, amazing, fantastic. And She's in Parties, also very beautiful. These three are not going anywhere. Next we have ABH. Um, I have four ABH palettes. I have the Jackie Ina, we have Modern Renaissance, Norvina, and Soft Glam. Now Jackie Ina is probably one of the most versatile palettes that I own. I really love using this. The quality is amazing and this color story is beautiful, so I am not getting rid of this. Soft Glam is another classic one. I kind of love this as like my go-to neutrals. It's a beautiful palette and there's just a lot to do in here. So I don't think this one's going anywhere either. Modern Renaissance. This one is one that I hummed and hawed over for such a long time. Let me flip it over towards the light. It's a stunning palette. I'm not gonna lie. It is a stunning palette, but it's it doesn't do anything that all of my other palettes don't do. And I really just don't know that it's a necessary addition to my collection. I don't really know that it's a necessary thing that I wanna keep. So I might put this into the probation pile for now and see after a few uses whether I still want to keep this. Cause I do love the packaging. It is really beautiful. Um, this kind of velvet packaging is stunning and amazing. And I just, I do really love this, but there's other things in my collection that fulfill this need for me. So I'm leaning towards decluttering, but we'll put it in the probation to give it a few more tries before I make a decision. Norvina. This one is a stunning color story. I really, really love this. There's not a single dud in this palette, I don't think. I quite like this a lot. The pinks and the purples work really nice together. I really love this beautiful rose gold tone up there. I I don't see myself decluttering this. I really, really don't because I do still really love this. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep this one. So far not been very successful. We have put one in the probation pile. We have Urban Decay Born to Run. This is really pretty, but I have a very hard time feeling inspired by this. I've used it once since I got it. And while it is really beautiful, I just don't find myself reaching for it. Like there's other things in my collection that I would much rather be using than this. It is a very versatile palette. Like there's a lot you can do with this and the quality is still amazing, but I just, I'm just not drawn to it. I'm really just not drawn to it. And a lot of these tones I can find, at least a lot of the more unique tones, like these blues and turquoises and these like bright, 
uh, kind of magenta purples over here. I can find these in other palettes, so I really don't think that I need this one. I can probably get rid of it. Next we have Ace Beauté. This is the Classical Paradise. This is really pretty. This is like one of my go-to fall palettes. I love this color story so, so much. I am quite drawn to this palette in the fall time, and I still feel like I can get a lot of use out of this. This is their old formula. They have since reformulated a lot of these palettes and all of the ones in this format. I don't feel ready to get rid of this, so I am going to keep it. We have this one from Beauteous Cosmetics, which is a very small indie brand based in the US. It is a beautiful palette and there's a lot that you can do with it, but a lot of the more unique tones in here I have already existing in other palettes. Like these three, the green, the purple, and the red, I already have in my Musée Beauty slash Kylaf Beauty Impressionism palette. So I really don't think that I need these. These shimmers are absolutely stunning, but I do not love that the entire bottom row of this palette is pressed glitters and it keeps me from wanting to turn to this palette and use it. So I might get rid of this. Ugh, but that that middle peach shimmer though is just so beautiful. Wait, it, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. So there's that one, that shimmer. This one seems like it might be really similar to my tiny marbles. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's very similar. Super, super similar. Yeah, and then the one in, in the Sydney Grace Tiny Marbles palette is just a little bit more shiny and shimmery and dimensional. So I'm gonna keep that one and declutter this one. And yeah, since I brought this one in, this is my Sydney Grace Tiny Marbles palette. I just got this in the mail um, after the last restock. This is just beautiful. It's everything that I could have wanted in this palette. Initially, I wasn't super drawn to this color story, but I did want to support Mel's family after she had passed away. And I had had my eye on this for a while. I just hadn't fully committed to the color story. And I'm so, so glad that I did because this palette is absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful. There's so much that you can do with this. And the look that I created with this palette was one of my favorites. So this is definitely a keeper for me. I'm probably gonna keep this until I can't anymore. Next, we have a couple more from Ace Beauty and I'm really, really struggling with these ones because they are so beautiful. They are so pretty. Like this palette is just amazing. Like it's so stunning. These fall tones and then these just two blues down here are just everything to me. And then the same thing, less so with this one, but this one's also still very beautiful. This is the Ace Beauté Scarlet Dusk palette. Sorry, I forgot what the name was. So this is the Scarlet Dusk and this is the Vintage Dawn. Yeah, so there's those two. This one's more like berry tones and then this one's very like fall autumnal themed. Um, they're both stunning palettes and they work really well together. My only issue with them is they're very similar to palettes that I already have. Like this one, not so much because this one I could, well, not, one single palette, but this one I could probably dupe out using all of my other palettes. The closest one to the Scarlet Dusk is probably the Faded Clementine. Like, eh, maybe. This shade and this shade look almost identical. And then this Tangerine shade and this shade look very similar as well. Hmm, is that one? And then this one here, the Vintage Dawn, looks very similar to my Musée Beauty Van Gogh palette. Not quite the same, but close enough that I don't know that it merits keeping both. You know, I'm these make me really happy, but I'm gonna put them in the probation pile and do a couple of looks trying to dupe out the vibes of both of these using the other palettes in my collection. And then we'll take it from there and see whether or not I'm going to keep these. So yeah, these ones are going in the probation pile with Modern Renaissance. Next one in this pile is the Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity. This one is not going anywhere. I love using this palette. It's very versatile. It's another one of those palettes along with the Jackie Ina palette that I think is just so versatile and there's so much that you can do with it. This one doesn't have any of her special shades in here, but I love this one because it includes the two six pan palettes that she had for her Star Wars collection back in 2019, um, which I missed out on that collection. And then plus two new rows in, or two new columns in the center here. So it's these two columns and these two columns here, 
that are the Star Wars columns and then the two in the middle are the new ones. And I'm so happy to have this because you can just make some really unique and interesting color stories with this. So yeah, this one is staying with me. Let's bring back that other one I was talking about. These are my two Muse Beauty palettes and spoiler alert, I uh, bought the rest of the collection or the rest of their lineup in palettes, all of the ones that were available anyway. Um, but because I just love their formula so, so much. The look that you saw in the beginning of this video was using the Musée Beauty Impressionism palette and it's just beautiful. These pa this palette is just out of this world amazing and stunning. I feel like a freaking work of art every time I use this. There's just so much that you can do with it and this palette is the reason that I got rid of my Beauteous Cosmetics palette because I have this green shade, this pink, or this red, and then what was the other one? Is the green, the red, and was it blue? I don't even know. It was the green, the red, and the purple I'm getting in the Rococo palette anyway, so there's really no point in keeping that one, but this one I'm going to keep because it is so beautiful. This formula, especially for the shimmers, is just so special and interesting and vibrant, and I just love it so, so much. This is staying with me for a very long time. Even after I can't even use this palette as a palette anymore, this is staying with me just for the artwork. This one is the same. It's just beautiful. Like this palette is a fall lover's dream. There's just so much to do here. So many different vibes you can get out of this tiny little nine pan. And like for, for a nine pan to have so much versatility and variety in the shades and the textures is just super special. I think that there's something really, really amazing and special about this palette and I'm, I'm keeping it forever. We have another Beauteous Cosmetics palette. This one has two press glitters in it. Um, again, I feel kind of the same about this one as I felt about the other one. I can definitely dupe out the shades of this palette with all my other palettes, and I do not love that in a nine pan palette I have two press glitters in here. This, this was definitely one of the palettes that was a victim of my I will buy this for the video mentality. Um, even though it was fairly price like this was very affordable like i didn't pay a lot for it i think this was about 12 or 13 dollars us so it wasn't a whole lot and it's a really nice palette it works really well um the the mattes are really beautiful i don't this is a full matte palette other than those pressed glitters but yeah the mattes behave uh, and blend out really beautifully but i just have these shades a few times over in my collection and I don't think that I need to keep this. These are my two Alter Ego palettes that I have. So if you don't know, Alter Ego does dupes of Natasha Denona and like at least they did Natasha Denona, now they're doing Pat McGrath as well. But this is, these are the dupes of the Metropolis and the Gold palette. I didn't love the original color stories enough to buy them full price but these work really, really nicely. They are really, really beautiful. The only thing about these two palettes is that the Metropolis is a little bit overwhelming for me just because there's so much color in here. It just, every time I look at it, I never know really what to do. Ooh, I'm looking at it now and some of the plastic on the inside is kind of lifting. Um, I'm not sure if that was the way that it was before but the, the eyeshadows still work really well. They haven't like dried out or anything. The cream to powder formula is not quite the same as it is in the Natasha Denona palette, but it kind of is fine. Like I can use all the other shades. I can see this potentially one day leaving my collection. I don't think I'm gonna keep this forever just because the color story is a little bit, there's a lot of kind of similar shades in here. I'm definitely keeping it kind of for those turquoisey blue colors in the middle. <sighs> You know what? I might put this in the in the probation, the Artemis palette, and see just how many times I use this, and just try to use it at least, and see if it still sparks joy. So this one is going into the probation pile. This one, I do really like this one, and honestly, the shades in here that I love so much with this 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 uh, turquoisey green, and then this sh turquoise shimmer are the same kind of shades that I get in the Metropolis palette, but this this really does have some really gorgeous golds in, in this palette, and I'm probably just gonna keep it for that because whenever I need to add a gold into a look, this is the palette that I go to, so this one is going to stay with me. This is probably the pile that's gonna get a lot of the declutters. This is my Ciate London, which one is this? Ciate London New England palette. That's what it looks like. It's a beautiful palette, there's a lot of versatility in here and a lot of really interesting shades, 
but I just don't reach for this. I really just don't reach for this. And there's a lot of shades in here that I can find in my other palettes. So I'm going to be decluttering this one, as nice as it is. And I do really like the formula. This Alomar Cosmetics Spanglish palette. Um, the color story is really nice, but it just kind of doesn't speak to me. I got this in the same thing as the Ciate London palette. I got this in a boxy charm. It is really pretty, but I just don't find myself reaching for it. These shimmers are really, really lovely. And I hesitate to keep this just because Alomar doesn't actually ship to Canada. So I don't want to continue using this and fall in love with the formula more and more and I can't get more of their products in Canada at all. So I'm, I was lucky to have been able to get this through the BoxyCharm. Yeah, ultimately I just, I don't know. I feel like I can dupe out a lot of these shimmers and a lot of these shades with my other palette. So I don't think that I need to keep this. I'm gonna declutter this one. Juvia's Place. This is the only Juvia's Place palette that I own. I honestly found this one to be a little bit lackluster because the shades just don't show up as pigmented as I've heard a lot of their other palettes do. I was definitely drawn to this because of the mix of corals and grays, but still I just really don't, I wasn't really interested in impressed with the performance of this palette. Like you can even see this gray just does not really show up that nicely. It's a little bit sheer, like it's not at the level that I would expect palettes to be. That brown swatched a little bit better, but definitely that gray was had left me a little bit wanting. It's just not the best. And even the shimmers were not super great. Eh. I mean, it's it's nice. Am I, have I just not given this enough of a chance? Have I just not given this enough of a chance? Look at that. That's pretty. Okay. You know what? Ugh, I'm changing my mind. I shouldn't be swatching things. This gray really is kind of underperforming this gray matte is not doing well. Okay, fine. Okay, fine, Juvia's Place. I'm gonna put this in the probation pile, play around with it a little bit more, and then make my final decision. Next, I have a couple of other one-offs from brands. This is my only Nabla palette that I have. This was the one that I had my heart set on. This one's not going anywhere, but this was the one. Because I thought that I couldn't get this one anymore, I bought the Norbina palette to try and dupe out the vibes of this one. It did like a decent enough job, but then I found this one available at this small like European, the small European shop online. And then I just ended up having both. But let's pull out Norvina and just kind of put them side by side. Do I need to keep both of these? Do I really need to keep both of these? Yes, I do, because this one has some really beautiful rose golds and stuff in it that I can't find in this one. Yeah, okay, fine, I'll keep both of them. This one's beautiful. This one was never in any danger of going anywhere. This one's my go-to palette in the springtime. I love this one. Another one-off, this is from Exo Beauty. This is the Native palette. I bought this one because I'm obsessed with New Zealand and the fact that this one was New Zealand themed and is named after different flora and fauna of New Zealand um, just really pulled at my, my heartstrings. And I do love the quality of this palette. And this is definitely one of my go-to neutral palettes. So yeah, this one is not going anywhere. So these are my two big Kaleidos palettes and neither of these are going anywhere. The Escape Pod is a palette that I bought kind of reluctantly, not reluctantly, I knew I wanted it, but oh, that's upside down. So yeah, this one, it's just so special. There's just such an, something so interesting about this palette. When I first saw it online, when I first saw people using it, I was not very impressed with it. I was like, oh, I'm never gonna use that. I'm never gonna like it. And every single time that I've used it, I've just loved the looks that I've created with this. This is such a special palette. It's probably one of the most special palettes that I own and I am going to keep it for freaking ever because it's so beautiful and so interesting. So yeah, this one is not going anywhere. And then the other one is the Club Nebula made in collaboration with Angelica Nickfist. This is a stunning palette as well. I used this just the other day to create a black pearl inspired look. And yeah, this one is absolutely not leaving my collection. It's stunning. It's limited edition, so it's no longer available. And it's made in collaboration with one of my favorite YouTubers. And I was so happy to support her. And I will continue to do so by using this palette and posting all of my looks on Instagram. A few other palettes here. Uh, this one's like 
I'll use this one first because this is actually a bunch of Tammy Tanuka shades. They all came in these kind of small mini sample sizes that I just pressed into all of these pans. I have all the shade names on these like little sticky notes, but these are absolutely beautiful. And because there's so little in there, like you can see the pans are not even like full. There's like a teeny tiny layer of eyeshadow at the bottom of each pan. Um, and I'll probably go through these pretty quickly. So yeah, those are, those are staying. This small dose of colors palette. Uh, I don't, I really don't know about this because this is so pretty. I really like this, but I don't know if I can maybe dupe this with my other palettes. Like, I really don't know. I love this color story so much and it's a fantastic little like mini palette that's easy to take traveling. Like if I wanted this kind of greeny color story, but I didn't want to take one of my bigger palettes that had this. Uh, it's, it's so pretty. It's so pretty and that gold is absolutely stunning too. Ugh, I don't know. This one might go in the probation pile as well. I'm gonna use it a little bit, a few more times and see how I feel about it. Um, but the packaging and everything just gives me all kinds of vibes. I love this. This is a palette that I got from Nomad Cosmetics. I kept the outside box because it has Romanian names on the, on the shades. Um, like a couple of the shades are translated into Romanian on the back, which I freaking love. Um, I also love the, the packaging with the castle and the bats and everything. So I kept the outside packaging, but the inside packaging is beautiful too. This one is not going anywhere. It is gonna be my go-to like fall Halloween palette. Um, just cause it's so versatile. Like there's so many different things you can do with this palette. I love that it's kind of separated in half with like the fall autumnal, like classic fall tones on this side. And then this side is more like spooky, gloomy, graveyard themed, monster themed colors on this side. Yeah, this is beautiful. And look at this packaging. This packaging is just the coolest. So yeah, this isn't going anywhere. Another beautiful Halloween palette that's not going anywhere. Um, this is the Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette. This is the first one. I did not buy the second one because there were too many just samey shades in there. It was basically just red and pink and I'm not really into that kind of a color story and they all just kind of look like the same shades. But this one, this one, the original Moonspell is a dream of a palette. There's so much you can do with this. This is right up there with the Jackie Ina and the Celestial Odyssey as some of one of my most versatile palettes that I have. You can do so much with this palette and the packaging is just spot freaking on. Like, can you, can you believe this packaging? It's just so cool. So yeah, this one is definitely staying. It looks like a little book you can put on a bookshelf and it just looks really, really pretty. Yeah. Next we have the Midas Cosmetics Genesis palette. This was made in collaboration with Drench Cosmetics. And this is the Genesis palette. I bought this because it reminded me a lot of the Melt Blueprint palette, but just amped up and done a lot more interestingly and better. Um, because the theme of this palette is also kind of like blueprints. Like the theme of the collection was You Are the Blueprint, which I think is super, super cool. And I think they did a significantly better job than Melt at the, at capturing that blueprint theme. So yeah, this one is gorgeous. And the looks that I've created with this are beautiful and I love them. So I'm going to keep this. Next we have Miss Huda. We have three Huda palettes here. I love all of these, but this is just a nude palette. This is really just a generic kind of, I'm gonna keep this here so I don't have to worry about the mirror. Um, yeah, this is just like kind of a generic nude palette with some pressed glitters, which I don't love. I'm curious whether I can maybe get rid of this because there's three shades in here that you can't really use. There's these two pressed glitters and then this weird concealer shade down here that no one can figure out why it's even there. I tried to use it once and it failed, but yeah, I really don't know. The shimmers in here are absolutely stunning. Like it is a beautiful palette, but it is just a nude palette. And I'm curious if I can kind of dupe this out with my other nude palettes. We'll see. I will put this in the probation pile and see how I can make this work. Um, if it still sparks joy, I'll keep it. If not, then goodbye. But yeah, probation pile you go. These two, however, spark so much joy. This one, I really don't think got its 
got its day in the limelight the way that it deserved to have. Um, this one is a stunning palette. It's so beautiful. It's rich and deep. You can really get a lot of depth out of this palette and get a lot of different kinds of looks. This shade up here, this shimmer, this kind of duochrome blue pink shimmer, you can definitely see it in the camera right now, the, the shift in it. It's beautiful. It's stunning. A lot of the shimmers in here are just gorgeous. And yeah, I just really don't think that this one got the hype that it deserved because it was gorgeous. The packaging, however, is not amazing. I don't really like that it just has a big, the big word naughty on the front of it. It's kind of meh, but the actual palette itself is beautiful. So I'm keeping that. This one is the freaking star of the show. This palette is probably one of the most beautiful palettes I've ever seen packaging wise and the inside of it just kind of matches that. Um, I have a whole video showing off this palette. I created three different looks with this palette. So if you wanna see everything to do with this palette, go watch that video. I'll link it up here somewhere. But yes, this one is absolutely staying in my collection. It's so beautiful. Yeah, this one is just stunning. My quintessential pink palette. Next we have a few smaller palettes. These are all of my Game Beauty palettes, which is a company that is based on video games, like all of their packaging and all of their shade names and everything that they do, their marketing is based on video games. I have three of their palettes. So we have the Harbinger palette. I do not know if this one is limited edition, but this is their like Halloween themed palette that they came out with. Then we have their Fantasy palette. This is the second one that they came out with. This is like a blue pink dream. It's really pretty. This one is probably my favorite of the three. I think it's just really stunning and beautiful and unique. And then we have the Adventure palette. This is the first one that they came out with and it has just a lot of really beautiful green tones in here accented by these golds and orange and purple. This is just really, really beautiful. But yeah, these are the three Game Beauty palettes that I have. Um, these ones are staying in my collection because I do really love them and they make me very happy. This one does have a pressed glitter in it, which I'm not super thrilled about, but the other ones don't have pressed glitters in them and they've since done away with the pressed glitter since people complained about it. So yeah, I love these. They're not going anywhere. Then I have two palettes from Sigil Inspired or Tammy Tanuka. I have the Lavender Chinchilla gorgeous, gorgeous palette. I do like really want more of her palettes because they're just so special and beautiful. And then I have the Mary Ice Fish. This one, when I got it, I smashed it because when I was taking it out of the packaging, I flung it across the room, but I was able to save all of these shades and re re push them into their pans using alcohol. And I was able to clean because I made a freaking mess of this palette, but little did I know erasers actually clean up the insides of these palettes. You're using an eraser and just scrubbing away at, at stained areas of the palette can actually get rid of stains on your eyeshadow palette. So that's what I did. And now it looks like pretty much good as new. There's obvious like pressed engravings on the shades now from where I used a quarter to push the, the napkin into it. But you know what? Can't win everything. But these really are just really special palettes. The color stories and just the quality of these eyeshadows is like, is unlike a lot of the other eyeshadows that I have. They really are just so special. So yeah, these both I'm going to be keeping. Next, we're moving into some more mini palettes. So these are the four Kaleidos mini palettes that I have. These ones are, I believe, six pans. They're all six pan palettes. Yeah, so these are six pans. I've kept all of the little plastic line, plastic linings in there just so that I can remember the shade names. But these, again, Kaleidos, if, if there was one brand that I would say is like one of my favorites, it's Kaleidos. So I'm going to definitely be keeping all of these. This one is the more neutral one. This is the Sashimi City, but it's just so special. Like for a neutral palette, this really just has so much life in it. And there's so much that you can do with it. Like the two shimmers in this palette are just out of this world. They're actually kind of duochrome -y. So it's, it's a neutral palette, but like stepped up a notch. And yeah, I do really love all of these. This one, the turquoise, the electro turquoise is one of the most unique and interesting color stories I've ever seen. So I'm going to be keeping this one for forever, pretty much. This one is the same. It's just so pretty. It's so special. All of these color stories are just so, so special. 
so I'm not I'm not getting rid of any of them. And then we have the Odin's Eye Minis. I'm going to do one collection at a time. So this was their Norns collection. We have Urd, Verdandi, and Skuld. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Urd is this really gorgeous green color story. Like this is one of the most beautiful palettes I've ever seen. And I freaking love green. So this is not going anywhere. It's staying with me. Verdandi is this stunning orangey coral neutrally palette. This is the most wearable of the three, but these two shimmer shades in the middle just make this palette what it is. They're so beautiful, especially mixed together. It's just a stunning, stunning combination. So yeah, this one is staying as well. And then we have Schooled. This one is an all shimmer palette, but I do love using this in conjunction with the other palettes that I have. It's a very, very beautiful accent palette and it's come in a lot. It's come in handy quite a few times when I've been creating other looks with other palettes. So this one's staying with me. Then the other three that we have are from their Alva 2 collection. We have the Sky palette, which is this pretty purple themed palette, purple and brown. Not my favorite of the color stories, but still really beautiful and I am going to keep it because I am drawn to it. The Forest palette, which is probably my favorite one. This one reminds me of the Zelda games and I love Zelda, so this is definitely staying in my collection. The shimmers and the mattes in here are just spectacular. They're stunning, some of the best quality I've ever tried. And this color story is just so unique and interesting. So yeah, I've created some of my favorite looks using this palette, that one's not going anywhere. And then we have the Ocean palette. This one, it just blew me out of the water. Haha, <laughs> get it, because it's an Ocean palette. But it just really, really excelled in its quality. Um, this blue can be a little bit difficult to work with sometimes, and it's definitely not as vibrant as it shows in here. It blends out as more of like a kind of aquamarine teal color, but it is still very beautiful, and I do love this palette so, so much with my whole, whole heart. So yeah, all of these Odin's Eye palettes are staying with me. That's my other favorite brand. It's probably Kaleidos and Odin's Eye that are like up there as my top favorite brands. This is the Natasha Denona Retro palette. I just recently got this in the Sephora sale. I wanna play around with this a lot more because it is really pretty and I do love all of these kind of rosy, pinky mauve tones. They're definitely colors that I um, I gravitate towards because they really bring out the green in my eyes. So I think palettes like this are just perfect for me in my eyes. So yeah, this one I'm going to be keeping. It is the only Natasha Denona palette that I have. Um, a lot of her other palettes just really haven't kind of screamed at me as something that I need, but this one just really called out to me. So I decided to make this my first Natasha Denona palette. Whether it's gonna be my only Natasha Denona palette remains to be seen, but we shall see. But for now, I'm very happy with this one. We have a couple more Odin's Eye palettes, actually a lot more to go through, but these are the first two palettes that they came out with. This is the Freya palette and the Solman palette. Freya is probably their most wearable color story. It's very neutral. There's a lot of like, just kind of berry, orange, brown tones in here. There's still a lot you can do with it, but it's definitely not one of their most versatile palettes, but I still really do love this. Solman is one of the most unique and interesting color stories I think I've seen in a palette. I love, love, love this kind of like mustard yellow paired with this like lilac purple. It's so, so pretty. And some of these duochrome shades in here are just stunning. The only one dud shade is this dark one. It really just doesn't show up. I cannot pick it up at all. I just cannot get it to work. But everything else in this palette is just perfection. It's so beautiful. So those are staying. And then we have the big Norns palette. This is the only big palette from Odin's Eye that I have so far, but this one is just perfect for the winter time. There's so many like gorgeous jewel tones in here. It's so special, so unique, and it's there's just so much that you can do with this palette. This, when it first came out, reminded me a lot of the Kathleen Lights ColourPop palette, the, what was it called? The So Jaded palette, the, the big mega one but this one is just stepped up a notch in every single way. This is everything that palette wished it could be. I love that palette too. I do have that palette and I use it a lot, but this one is everything that that palette wished it could be. So this one is staying in my collection forever. 
it's just so pretty. The packaging is also stunning. Then we have probably my three favorite palettes from Odin's Eye. These are the legendary Diversa palettes from the collaboration, the three-way collaboration that they did with Judy, Tina from the Fancy Face, and Annette's Makeup Corner. These two palettes I believe are still available. This one is sold out and will not be coming back. These were all limited edition, but this is the Giant Wolves palette. It's a beautiful grungy winter themed palette. There's a lot you can do with this one as well. Very versatile. Whenever my heart screams for these dark grungy green and deep tones, I will reach for this. It is just beautiful and I love, love, love the packaging. This is Tina's palette and this is a summertime dream. Like this is literally the perfect summertime palette. There's so many bright, vibrant colors in here that you can use to create the most beautiful looks. And then also some dark shades in order to deepen out looks if you want to do that as well. Tina really did such an amazing job with this palette. It's just so stunning and beautiful and really just looks like a hummingbird. And finally, Judy's is a fall dream. This one has a lot of like neutrals and reds and this beautiful jade green in the center there. This one is definitely the most wearable of the three palettes. And I've gotten quite a few different looks out of this one. I do have a video reviewing all three of these palettes. I'll throw it somewhere up there if you want to see that. But yes, I would absolutely buy all of these again in a heartbeat. And these are staying with me for as long as I live. They're gonna get buried with me in the casket. And then the last one of this pile is the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction. This is the only Pat McGrath palette, or no, this is the only Mothership Pat McGrath palette that I own, like the big, big ones. I bought this one at the recommendation of like literally everybody because they told me that this is the best one and I'd never had a Mothership palette before and I wanted at least one to try. And they were not kidding. These eyeshadows really are just out of this world amazing. Like just look, you can even see just this shade in the light. Just like look how it shifts and changes. This palette is unreal. It is absolutely unreal. In the next few days, I plan to film a tutorial with this palette creating a holiday look. I know I created a holiday look last year using the Soft Glam. This year I'm gonna be using this palette with my grubby fingerprints all over it. But yes, this one, it's new to my collection. I bought this one as well in the, the Sephora sale. But yeah, this one is staying with me for forever. And the packaging is just so beautiful. I did that wrong. Look at this, look at this. Look how beautiful. This is just amazing. So these are the minis, mini of the mini palettes. These are very small. First, we have this Urban Decay Petite Heat. I got this from a friend of mine who was decluttering her own collection and she thought that I would like it. I do really enjoy this, but I find that I have other things in my collection that meet these needs. So I don't think that I need this. So I'm probably going to see if I can pass this along to somebody else the way that she passed it along to me and just kind of, keep the love going with this palette because I'm sure someone will enjoy this. Because this is a really nice palette, it performs beautifully. I just already have a lot of these shades in my collection, um, but I'm happy that I was able to try it and we'll see that, we'll see who else would get some use out of this. I have two of these M Cosmetics palettes and I adore both of them with my whole, whole being. So we have Faded Clementine and oof, if I can ever open it. Magic Hour as well. Magic Hour is one of my go-to neutral palettes, especially for traveling. And Faded Clementine, I was ogling over for so long before I finally bought. It is my favorite orange themed palette that I have in my collection. Yeah, so both of these are staying in my collection. They're not going anywhere. I love them very much. And then we have these two quads from Midas Cosmetics. To be honest, I really don't see myself reaching for these a whole lot. And then these tones, I, they are beautiful. They're stunning. I just don't reach for quads that much because I like choice. I don't like too much choice as seen with the Metropolis Artemis palette, but this is just not enough choice. <laughs> and like, I can see these working for a lot of people. I bought these at the recommendation of a few YouTubers and I do enjoy them. I do like them but I just don't find myself reaching for them that much. They don't excite me the way my other palettes do. So I might just declutter these. Not that I don't like the quality, the quality is beautiful, but I just feel like they're not, they're not for me. They're not my cup of tea, you know? Okay, 
we've gotten to it. We've gotten to the ColourPop section. We're getting into the nitty gritty. We're going to be ruthless, ruthless, ruthless. We're gonna get rid of things. We're not gonna keep things because they might look pretty in the, in like the second that I'm looking at them. Let's take the first pile. This one is the first of the tie-dye palettes that they came out with. This is the Miss Bliss palette. I've used this once and to be honest, it's really underwhelming. It's kind of meh. It performs well, but these are just not shades that I tend to go for. I have this in other palettes, even just from ColourPop. So this one is gonna go. The second of the ColourPop ones is the Aura and Out. And honestly, this is one of the more unique palettes in their lineup. This one is like a green apple palette. It looks like a green apple shade, the greens in here. Um, the yellows are kind of meh, like the yellows on this side are meh, but these like pastel greens and blues are actually quite beautiful. So of the three pa like pastel-y tie-dye palettes, this is the one that I might actually keep because it is the more unique of the three. So I'm actually going to be keeping that one. Next is our In a Trance palette. This one is like fairy unicorn dreams. This is pink, purple, and blue color story. This is again, the third one in their tie-dye collection. I actually really do like this one. There's a lot that I can do with it. There, of all three, I think this one has the most versatility, um, even opposed to the green one. The green one I think is the more interesting and unique color story, but this one has the most versatility. So I might keep this one as well, just because I don't have a whole lot of pastels in my collection at the moment. When I end up getting the other Musée Beauty palettes, I might change my mind and we'll do another declutter then. But for now, I am going to keep this. Next we have Going Coconuts. This, of all of their neutral palettes, is my favorite one. This one has the most beautiful shade in it. This Coconut Cocoa Crush, I think is what it's called. Yes, this Cocoa Crush shade in the middle, this shimmer, is one of the most beautiful shimmers that I have in my entire collection. So. Of all of their neutral palettes, this is my favorite. So this one is Sting. I have used this one quite a bit and I actually really, really love it. So yeah, this one is staying with me. Then we have this one, Blow in Smoke. This is a really pretty palette, but I really don't, I have black. I have black shades in my other palettes and I don't know that I need this. I really don't know that I need it. I have really beautiful silvers in other palettes. Yeah, I just don't know that I need this. Do we wanna declutter it? This one might just go into probation for now until I've decided, but we'll see. We'll see if how I feel about it after I've used it a couple more times on my own, just to see if I still like it. Baby Got Peach. I do really like this. I do really like this, but, but is it too similar to my other favorite ColourPop palette? And do I need both? Oof, this one, okay, I'm gonna keep this one aside because this is one of my favorite ones from ColourPop, but my other favorite one might be too similar to it and I don't know if I need both of them. I'll keep this one aside for now until we get to that one so we can compare and contrast. Uh huh, honey, it's so pretty. It is really pretty. It is really, really pretty and I love yellow. I really don't know. This one is another one that I think I might have to keep in the probation pile just to see because some of the brighter shades of yellow in this palette come off on the eye just really, really chalky and it looks dry. Like it looks really dry on the eye, dry on the eye, haha. But yeah, this one might also go into probation so I can use it a little bit more and just see what I can do with it because I've also heard that there's other yellow palettes that just do this a lot better. Yeah, I don't know. I'll keep this to the side as well so that my other, there's another palette that I really like that is kind of similar to this and I'll compare and contrast and see how I feel. So these ones we're keeping aside to compare later. Mint to be, mint to be. This one is actually really pretty. I do really love this color story and this is one of the more unique nine pan palettes that they've come out with. So this one I am actually going to keep. Now these two, these two I'm very conflicted about. Main Squeeze is pretty. I do enjoy it, but I feel like I can get this with a lot of the other red toned palettes that I have. 
so I don't know that I need to keep this. In contrast, we have the strawberry shake, which is just a whole lot of pinks. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of this one because I don't think I'm gonna be using this. I have shades of pink that are kind of like this in my collection already, and I really don't think I'm gonna be reaching for this. They're just not really my shades that I tend to get drawn to, so I'm just, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of it. This one, however, I do really like it. I do really like it. But again, I don't know if maybe I can dupe this out with other palettes. Okay, I'm gonna, this one's going into probation. I'm going, it's going into probation. It's going into probation. More nine pen palettes. Um, this one, this is the Christmas Hello Kitty one that came out last year. I'm really just not that into it. Like I like this palette, it's cute, but I feel like I can dupe out these shades with other things in my collection and I'm just really not that drawn to it. This one's also gonna go into probation. I wanna try it a few more times before making up my mind just to see, cause it's, should I just, do I just, do I just, these shimmers are gonna make it or break it. The shimmers are gonna make it or break it. Ah, okay. They are pretty. Damn it, damn it. Okay, probation it is. Okay, this is the Baroque palette. This came out for fall last year. This is, again, one of the more unique color stories that they've come out with, and I also really love the artwork on the palette, so I'm going to keep this one because I've used it a few times and it still does spark joy, and I'm happy with my looks every time that I use it. So it is, okay, you know what? Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a hot second. Let's bring out Blow and Smoke. Those really are very similar, aren't they? Very similar, other than maybe that middle row of silver. Do I wanna? You know what? You know what? We're gonna keep Baroque and we're gonna declutter Blow and Smoke. But definitely this one is staying. We have That's Taupe which is also very stunning. I do really like this cool toned palette and I don't have a lot of cool toned neutral palettes in my collection other than this one. Um, I've actually avoided buying other cool toned palettes such as the Natasha Denona Glam palette because I have this one and because it performs super well. So yeah, this one is going to be my buffer between myself and other cool toned neutral palettes that I do not need. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this. Nude Mood on the other hand, really just looks like the soft glam. Let's bring her out. Let's bring this baby out. It looks really fucking similar. The only one that's kind of different is this wink wink shade here. And I don't, I really don't need both of them. I really don't need both of them. Let's, let's swatch some things. Oh, that's soft. I like that. Swatch. Swatch. Oh, oh, that middle, that middle shade there. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, maybe I do need this. Ah, why am I swatching things? I think I just need to make a point of using these more often because it is really pretty. It is so pretty. Oh, and that that put on air shade in the middle there. What the hell? Come on, ColourPop, stop getting me with these beautiful shimmers. Fuck. Okay, um, <laughs> I keep both of them. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the probation. They're all going in probation. I, gotta, I just gotta use them more and make up my mind. Damn it. Okay, we're gonna keep these two aside and see if anything else pops up in the ColourPop range that might dupe those. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that aside to be compared later. All right, we have Making Mobs. This one also has one of the most beautiful shimmers in it that I've ever used, and I do actually quite enjoy using this. There is one in the bigger palettes that might be a dupe for it, and I don't really think I need both of them. So I'll put this one aside for now until we get to it, and then we'll decide then. Costa Coral. This one is my favorite. I really love this. This is the one that is kind of really similar 
to the baby got peach and I really don't think I need both of them. Like it's so freaking similar, like so stupidly similar. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this one. We're gonna get rid of baby got peach. We don't need it. It is not calling my name today. Not the way that Costa Coral is. Just like, just look at that packaging. Look how pretty that packaging is compared to this. Like, come on, come on. And this one has a pressed glitter, this one does not. We're gonna get rid of her. She's going, 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 gone. Bye, this one's staying. Cause I love her. We love, we love a pink bitch. Moving on, we've got Blush Crush. This one is really pretty, but there's nothing really that stands out about it that I cannot get in other palettes other than the beautiful packaging. Like the packaging, I will admit, is stunning on this palette, is absolutely beautiful. But again, yeah, this one is just kind of boring and meh. I don't think that I need this. The only shade that I would wanna keep it for is maybe this pink in the middle, but I'm sure that I have that shade in other ColourPop palettes. So this one is gonna go. Then we have Big Poppy. Again, another one that is just beautiful. This one is actually all matte. I don't know that I need this one either. It is orange, but I feel like I have other orange palettes that do the same thing. Um, let's just compare it to the other orange palettes in my collection. So we have the Faded Clementine from M Cosmetics. Even maybe the Odin's Eye Judy palette dupes a lot of these shades as well. Yeah, a lot of these deeper shades are duped in the Judy palette. So you know what? I'm going to pass that one along and give it to somebody else who might want it. I've literally only used this once, so I'm pretty sure that I could either sell this or gift it to somebody and they would really love this. So that one is going, going, gone. This one, however, is staying. This one is one of my favorite palettes in my whole collection. This one is just so interesting. It is another all matte palette from ColourPop. It is sunflower themed, Little Ray of Sunshine. It is their yellow matte palette. And this is the one that I actually wanted to compare to the Aha uh -huh Honey because they are kind of similar. This one is just a little bit deeper with more autumnal tones. And I think honestly, I'm gonna get rid of Aha uh -huh Honey because these tones are a little bit more flattering on my skin tone and they just perform better. I don't get the same kind of chalkiness with this palette that I did with this one. Um, I might try this one out one more time, so I'll throw it in the probation pile, but I think I'm probably going to get rid of it in favor of this one. I just don't need both. So yes, this one is gonna go. The only reason I can see keeping this one is for the shimmers, but I do have some more goldy shimmers in my other palettes. I'll see, I'm gonna play with around with this one a little bit more and see how I feel, but for now, I really don't think I need to keep it. I'll see, as I keep going through my other palettes, I'll, I'll make a final decision. I'll go back through the probation palette and see if there's any that I'm just like, you know what, get rid of it. But this one, my favorite little baby is staying. And then we have the collaborations with Disney. The, all of these are staying in my collection. We have the Mandalorian, the child palette. This is just beautiful. I love these shades of green and brown. It's perfect for like the springtime and the fall time, even the winter time. This is just a very versatile palette and it performs very well. That one is staying. We have the Anna palette from the Frozen 2 collection. I don't love that there's a pressed glitter in here, but I do love all the looks that I've come out with with this palette. It is very versatile. It's very interesting. I love this color story and it just screams Anna and I just love Frozen 2. That one is staying. This one is one of the most unique color stories in my collection and that ColourPop has ever done. I think that this palette really performs well. A lot of people seemed to not like it, but I don't know why, because I do freaking love this palette. Um, one of the reasons I love this palette so much is because you can literally use every single shade in one look, and I'm very drawn to those kinds of palettes. So yeah, this one is absolutely staying. Next, we have the big palettes from ColourPop. This one's leaving. I fucking hate this. <laughs> It's okay, but it's just meh. It's just okay. And I'm not gonna keep a palette that is just okay. There's really nothing that special to it. The pastels don't perform very well. It's just a meh kind of palette. It smells like candy. That's like the only thing going for it. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just over it. I'm over it and it's going. This one, the Raw Beauty Christie and ColourPop palette at Forest Sight 
is absolutely staying in my collection. This is one of the most beautiful color stories that ColourPop has ever done. And thank you, Raw Beauty Christie, for that because this is just this is just beautiful. And it reminds me of home. Um, for those who don't know, I kind of grew up on the west coast of British Columbia, so I'm very drawn to this palette because it reminds me of of my hometown. So I'm going to be keeping this. Next, this one's also one that I'm going to be keeping. This is the Sailor Moon palette. Um, I have used this one a lot, as you can tell by the the dips in a lot of these shadows. So yeah, this one, the, the packaging is just so cute. Um, this was the first ColourPop palette that I ever bought and I just have sentimental value surrounding this one and I still do really enjoy using it, so I'm going to keep it. This is the one that I wanted to, this is the Flutter By palette. This is the one that I wanted to compare to the Making Mobs. This one does have a pressed glitter in it. This one has a lot of the same shades that you get in this one. And honestly, I like the Making Mobs a lot more and I don't think that I need both of these. So you know what? I'm gonna get rid of the Flutter By palette. I just don't like it nearly as much as I like the Making Mobs and it's not as like small and I'm just not drawn to it as much. So I'm going to keep Making Mobs and I'm gonna get rid of Flutter By. Next we have the Wild Nothing palette, also from ColourPop. This is another one that I'm probably gonna get rid of because I have these shades like several times over in my collection. It's another neutral palette. Let's actually compare this one to Nude Mood. Yeah, this one's very, very similar. I would almost say that Nude Mood is more interesting. The only shade that's making me reconsider keeping this one is this shade Seashells, which I do really like. I just, I love the vibes of this palette. I love the, the cactus imagery on it. Ugh, I might just, okay, we'll, we'll put it in probation. I'll keep using that one. All right, so we have Give It To Me Straight. I really just don't reach for this. A lot of people really loved this palette, but I have other palettes that fulfill this for me. So I really don't think that I need to keep this. So I'm gonna get rid of it. This one is, oh my God, I did not expect this to be as fire as it was. Like, look at this palette. It's so beautiful and it screams Barbie. They took the Barbie theme and fucking ran with it. This palette is the good shit. This is the good kush. The same formula that exists in the I Love Sarah He palette exists in this one, and it is the greatest formula that they've ever had at ColourPop, and this is absolutely staying in my collection. This is just a 70s dream. I, I, I absolutely adore this palette. Next, we have the Sandstone palette. It's just a whole lot of neutrals and greens and oranges and cultural appropriation. Thanks, ColourPop. This one is another one that's very similar to the Nude Mood. Even some of these like neutrals in here, like the neutral shimmery bronzy shades, like this one and this one are kind of the same, but I don't think that I need to keep both of them. I'm just gonna swatch a couple of the colors that make me want to keep this and see how I feel. Ooh, that green is kind of delicious though. Oof. Those are kind of nice. Those are kind of nice. Kind of nice. Let's, uh, I'm gonna swatch this middle one from the, that's still a lot nicer. And this green that I really like from this palette, it looks really similar to, it looks really similar to this Dose of Colors shadow. Let's just swatch that really quickly. Mm, it's a little bit more dimensional than the Dose of Colors shimmer. You know what, am I just, was I just suddenly disillusioned with the Dose of Colors palette? Have I suddenly just decided I don't want it? Is it just kind of meh? And do I maybe kind of sort of want to keep the sandstone because of that green? I think I've been convinced out of this one. I think I have. That feels good. I feel like I can get rid of this because that deep green doesn't really perform all that well. Oh, actually, let me compare it. Let's compare that to the Erd palette just to see because those, that green, that dark green, no, it is different. That green, oh, that green. So it's not the same, but how is it compared to this? Oh, those are similar. This green and that green are very, very similar. Let's do some swatching. Those are almost exactly the same. 
This one's a little bit more cool toned. That one's a little bit more warm toned. This is the Mandalorian. That is the dose of colors. But you know what? It's not making enough of a difference for me to care. So let's get rid of this. We're gonna get rid of the dose of colors. Goodbye, so long. But we still haven't decided what we're gonna do with this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Cause I do, I, I shouldn't keep this just for two shades because this green, desert sky and westward are just stunning colors. They're just beautiful. Maybe I can take those out. Oh, I don't know. These two might just have to go into the probation pile and just keep using them. I'll, let's put them here with the rest of the neutrally warm shades. Okay, this one, I'm definitely keeping all of my Disney princess palettes. It's just not even a question, but we have the It's a Princess thing, which is their more neutrally kind of palette. Actually, while we're here, let's just, let's just, you know, let's just. So these two have like literally nothing in common. So we're just gonna accept maybe this shade and then this shade. But this one and this one, there's not that, there's like these three shades that kind of fit with this, but you know what? There's not enough for me to care. So we're gonna continue to keep those aside. And this one is staying because I do really love it. I love using it. It's a whole lot of fun and it's pretty. It's really pretty. And this silver here is one of the best silvers that I have. Um, same thing as the one in the Elsa palette, just the most beautiful silver color. So yeah, this one is staying. Cause I'm also a sucker for Disney princesses. This one as well. I hate that there's two press glitters in here, but what can you do? That is life. But I just love the packaging. I love that the lineup of Disney princesses is on the inside of this. I do just really love this color story. I think it's one of the more unique ones that they've come out with. So yeah, this one is staying in my collection. Then we have the garden variety. I honestly forgot that I had this until just now. I'm really just kind of disillusioned with this one. It's kind of meh. It's pretty, but you know what? I don't care that much. And obviously I forgot that I owned this, so it didn't make that much of a mark on me. So I'm going to be getting rid of this. Then we have the I Love Sarah He Through My Eyes palette. This one is not going any freaking where. This is so pretty. It is stunningly beautiful, this palette. I absolutely adore this palette. Um, it is the good Kush, the same way that the Barbie palette is. It is the best formula that they've ever had at ColourPop. So this one is not going anywhere. But now that I see it, this shade here looks awfully similar to this middle shade. Let's see if we can potentially get rid of new, new nude mood. Oh, I feel like that's gonna be too bronzy. Oh my God, it's still so delicious. They're very similar. They're very, very similar. But this is the one from Nude Mood, that middle shade. Damn it, they just nail those middle shades. What the fuck, ColourPop? Ah, uh, do I just keep it? Because that middle shade is fire. Like, it's so nice. But they're very similar. They're so similar. It's just that the one from Nude Mood is that much more bright and dimensional and beautiful. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, this one we're keeping for sure. So we're gonna put that over here. This one is just, it's just, we're just gonna keep comparing it to things. This one I talked about earlier. I really do enjoy this one. I don't like that there's two pressed glitters in it, but again, what can you do? Um, I don't mind it as much because this is a massive palette. Ooh, hold up, hold up. Do we have a dupe on our hands? Can I get rid of this? Can I get rid of this? Oh, those are so similar. Oh, I will, I'm gonna be so mad if I still like the sandstone one more. This westward shade. Oh, it's so pretty. It's really pretty. Damn it. But let's try this tiger eye. Oh yeah. It's not, I'm not gonna like it as much. Damn it. Those are very, very different. Those are very different. I hate everything. This video, I swear, is just gonna become the video where I try to dupe out this stupid shade so that I don't have to keep this dumb palette. Because ultimately, it's just, it's it's really nice. This one too, this one also I really like. Damn it, stop it, ColourPop, stop it. Anyway, this one's staying in my collection because I do really like it and I like to, to dip into it and I love to pair this with the Norns palette because they complement each other so beautifully. Ugh, I just, I wanna get rid of this. <laughs> I wanna get rid of this because the, there are only two shades that I wanna keep it for. But those two shades are so pretty. It's literally this green and this green. Let's see, can I dupe them out somehow? I know that there's a green shimmer in here. 
Potentially, maybe, potentially, let's see. Ooh. No, not quite, not quite, not quite. Oh, we have another potential. We have another potential in here. Potentially, maybe. No, I think we're gonna have the same issue on our hands here. Yeah, this one's just darker. That one's darker, it's not quite the same. That's not quite it. Oh shit, we found it, y'all. Hell yeah. Oh, oh shit, we found it. We found it and it's like a thousand times better. Goodbye, so long, farewell, I won't miss you. Classic Pat McGrath coming to the rescue. Nice, so then the last one that I'm really considering is this one. Cause I, I love that middle shade so, so much. And I don't, I don't know if I want to get rid of this. I don't know if I want to get rid of this. It is so similar to this though, but that middle shade, that middle shade is just so special. And honestly, if I'm going to be traveling with a neutral palette, I'll let more likely take this than this because I know this one is very fragile and they can break very easily. I'm so bad at making decisions. Who gives me power? Who gives me the power to do anything? Why? I can't make a decision to save my goddamn life. Maybe I should just keep it. Fuck it, I'm just gonna keep it. I'm just gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it, meh. Well, my friends, I hope it's not too much of a disappointment, but if there's anything that I've learned in life, it's that you can't win every battle. I'm going to keep this one because I like it. I like it and there's no duping out that middle shade. So you know what? I'm just gonna lose this battle and keep it. But we've gotten rid of a lot. We've gotten rid of quite a few. I'm gonna go back through our probation pile and see if there's anything that, you know what? I just don't feel like retrying. I don't feel like it's necessary to continue just lying to myself and considering that maybe I'll keep it. This one is kind of up there. This one is kind of one of the ones that I'm like, do I really need this? Do I really need to even continue trying this? You know what? I'm not going to. This one's just gonna get decluttered because I can dupe out these shades a thousand times over. It looks a lot like Baby Got Peach. It looks a lot like Costa Coral. This seashells shade is not even special enough to merit keeping this. I'm sure I have it elsewhere in my collection. I really don't need this. So this is gonna go. Then we have our baby uh -huh honey. I do really love yellow. I do really love yellow. I don't know if that I want to get rid of this, but I have my other yellow palette that I love so much. I'm going to try this one more time. This one's a little bit harder for me to get rid of. Blowing smoke. I like this, but how often do I really use these black tones? Not an awful lot. I don't, I'm not usually going to go towards blacks or silvers or anything. It's just not really my jam. It's not really my vibe. I'm gonna swatch some of these gray shades just to see how I feel about them. The silver's pretty, but I have that silver in like a thousand other palettes. Those are, those are very nice. I'll, I'm gonna try this one one more time and see how I feel about it. Actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't need it. This one, it's nice, but other than like this shade, it's really just kind of meh. I'm gonna get rid of this one as well. I don't think I need this, and it's really just not amazing. Like it's not the best thing in the world, so I'm just gonna, just gonna get rid of it, bye. It's cute, I like the packaging, but it's just meh, whatever. Okay, main squeeze. What other reds? do I have in my collection that serve this purpose for me? I think this one, I don't know that I have that much that could dupe this in my collection, so I might keep this just because I like the theming and it's really cute and I have found myself reaching for this quite a bit since I bought it, so I am gonna keep this one. This one's gonna stay in probation. I'm gonna use it a little bit more Actually, okay, you know, I'm gonna keep both of these in probation and see how I feel about them after using them a few times. So those three have stayed in probation. This one is beautiful. It's gorgeous, but there's just too much, I think. 
I don't know. I might challenge myself to use this for an entire week and see how much I can get out of it. And if by the end of that week, I don't absolutely love this, I'll get rid of it. But for now, staying in probation, these two. I have loved these for so freaking long. They're so beautiful. They just make me happy. They just make me happy, especially when paired together, you know, like they're a pair. They're a pair. They come and go from my collection as a pair. If I, I can't get rid of one and then keep the other, I just can't do that. So you know what? Since I got rid of the strawberry shake, I'm going to keep this one. And then this one, fuck it, I'm gonna keep both of them. I'm gonna keep both of them. I'll use them a little bit more. Let's stick them, let's keep them in probation. I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna see how I feel about them. And then I'll decide, but strong leaning towards keep this one. Nude mood or whatever. No, the other one was nude mood. This one's new nudes. It's too many new nudes, nude mood nudes. I fucking, for me, this one, the shimmers make this palette. The shimmers really make this palette. So many people have spoken such great things about this palette. I wanna use it a little bit more before I make a decision. So yeah, this one's gonna stay in probation. And lastly, we have the Modern Renaissance. It is a beautiful palette. I will give it that. I'm gonna keep this in probation, but we're strongly leaning no for this one. We have ended the declutter with eight palettes in probation. All of these palettes that we will be decluttering all of these palettes that are going, going, gone. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22. We are decluttering 22 palettes today. 22 palettes we're decluttering. That's wild, that's wild. So a lot of these will go up on Poshmark, but 22 palettes. I'm happy with 22 palettes decluttered. There are more palettes that are coming into my collection. I bought a couple of more Odin's Eye palettes and the Kylab Beauty palettes. So those will be coming in my collection and I will be making videos on them. But until then, this has been me for my collection and declutter video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and you wanna see more of my content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my video down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.